What's up guys, Duarte here with another Marvel Strike Force video and in this video we are going to take a look at Dark Dimension 5 The race is over, Tanado Mac Japan won once again and we are going to take a look at the characters he used how many attacks he did, the gear investments and so on and after, at the end of the video we are going to give him a rating to give an evaluation on his performance on Dark Dimension 5 and we are going to do this for only the, the top 3 players which should be Tanado Mac, then a Better Ray Bill and then a Philosopher if someone finishes before Philosopher then we'll change uh, so yeah, we are going to take a look at the different characters they use it the, the value of the, those characters, the, their future proof also the gear efficiency and the character efficiency and then a skill rating as well based on how many nodes they were able to one shot or not so once again this video is going to be about Tanado Mac Japan and then we'll have two more videos in the next days about the better Ray Bill and also Philosopher okay so let's get started let's first take a look at the nodes and the nodes they are quite interesting there are lots of lots of different things that we need to take into consideration the best part is that we don't have way too many characters so i think that uh, scopely was quite nice on us to don't make the node super difficult so for example here we have a long shot and shatter star but that's pretty much it about the new characters here we have a few silver surfers so that's going to require a few stuns and uh, that's something to have into consideration when you are gearing up the characters we also have a symbiote spider-man here which is a problem then on this other node we have Hela and the symbiote spider-man and a big ass greg and also misty knight so those are a few of the new characters that can be a little bit problematic but uh, overall they they were nice on us is more is dark dimension 5 more similar to dark dimension 4 or, or to dark dimension 3 i think it's more similar to dark dimension 4 in terms of difficulty until the last uh, three nodes on the last three nodes it's quite difficult but we can take a look at that in another video in terms of the difficulty okay so let's take a look at the nodes and how well Tanado Mike Japan did so on the first node he did 36 million so he one shot this node then on the second node we have 53 million across the board so he also one shot this node and he was using on the first node I think he was using the same thing let's see first node he was using the so captain sam kestrel then cloak and dagger and sharon carter so this is a surprising team doesn't have a lot of healing just uh, some healing from uh, dagger but we have the stun like i was mentioning before it's going to be important we have a big taunt and uh, we have a lot of blinds and things like that now in terms of iso weight i'm not exactly sure if this is the best iso weight or the iso weight i would agree with but i guess he went for more damage output rather than more control and uh, sustainability okay so on the next node he was able to unshot as we saw before and uh, in terms of characters he changed from uh, sharon carter and uh, from uh, kestrel and uh, captain sam to the eternals plus deadpool yes deadpool okay so yeah so he went full mystic this is something very expensive and we'll take a look at the gear performance where it wasn't so great his performance in terms of uh, diversifying the gear uh, but yeah so he was able to one shot this node and uh, that's good for him okay so now, now let's take a look at the third node where he how did he do so we have 36,000 and the node is also 36 so he was able to one shot and use exactly the same team eternals cloak and dagger and uh, deadpool which all of them are very strong characters so it's to be expected okay so we have the first city node and for the city nodes he used exactly the team i suggested not saying that he watched my video but uh, 
uh, it's a possibility. So he's using the Symbiotes plus Cloak and Dagger and uh, Shang-Chi. I think overall this is the best team and it's very nice to see it in action and uh, that... Okay, so here he was not able to one-shot it, so the node is 50 million points and uh, he was not able to one-shot it. So probably a two-shot and that's pretty much it. So here is the point where a few of these Isoids if he would change it would be a little bit different especially not having skirmisher on symbiote spider-man i would uh, re consider uh, having the skirmisher because there is a high chance that you'll fail your stun and uh, your slow so it it's something that i would do different but uh, that's the way it went okay so now let's take a look at the second node we have 47 million and he did exactly that a little bit more and he uh, used exactly the same team symbiotes cloak and dagger and uh, shang chi now we have the final node of uh, global of a city actually and we have 41 million and he did exactly that uh, we're using the same team so this team worked out very well for every node except the first one so once again maybe if he would have skirmisher on uh, symbiote spider-man he would have a little bit uh, easier time Okay, so now let's take a look at the node number 7, the, node, the first node of global. And we have 41 million, almost. And he did exactly that, and he's using a very interesting team, or questionable team, I don't know. But he's using Captain America Sam, we have Sharon Carter, Doctor Doom, Emma Frost, and Ghost. So this is two interesting characters that I would not uh, use myself. I think they are very expensive and while Emma is okay, I don't think Ghost is able to do much because of her low HP and it's going to be always based a lot on, on luck where she is one-shotted or not and you have to start over the node over and over again in order to make sure that you have the right RNG. In terms of Iso White, I'm also a little bit confused with this Iso White, but okay, sure, no problem. He was the only one that was able to one-shot uh, this node, so uh, props for that. So let's take a look at the second node. We have uh, 60 million HP points and he did exactly that using the same team so waiting a little bit for the right RNG with the ghost maybe it paid off for the first two nodes because with everyone else here they were not able to do so okay so now let's take a look at the last global node we have 80 million that's quite a lot and no one was able to unshot it but here Tornado changed from a Ghost to Sharon Carter and he did 65 million so that's more than 60% of the node which I I think it's very decent and uh, once again he changes from a Ghost to Sharon Carter for the extra heals and the extra ads and uh, so on and the higher synergy between these three characters okay so now let's take a look at the cosmic nodes and here we know exactly which team he used he used the eternals plus deadpool philavelle and kestrel this is one of the teams that i suggest i think is very strong these eternals they are just huge on a dark dimension so if you can bring them you should deadpool right now is on my questionable list it's still a good option but uh, we have to wait and see for the next patch to make sure that she she still has the value for it. Filavel and Kestrel overall good characters and uh, he did very very good. He one shot the node so that's great. Okay now let's take a look at the second node. We have 66 million and uh, he did the most damage with 43 million. He used exactly the same team and everyone else did worse than him by half by 50 percent so that's huge then we have the last node we have uh, 76 million hp points and uh, he did 52 million so once again much higher than everyone else and uh, i think uh, not bad performance maybe with a few different options uh, we would able to do this a little bit better but overall i think he did quite great 
So now let's take a look at the final three nodes, the legendary nodes, and here is where I think he did the worst, and his options were quite questionable. So he took Phoenix, Black Bolt, Ebony Mo, Omega Red, and Adam Warlock. Now, if you're using Adam Warlock and Omega Red, you have to bring Dr. Octopus. It's 100% necessary to bring him. So whenever you apply the two stuns and the ability blocks, you can extend for two turns and that's uh, that alone is just huge. So maybe that explains why he did so poorly on the legendary notes. Bringing Phoenix was not a great idea. In my opinion, I think she has way too low HP and because there is no tank legendary that can protect Phoenix, I don't think this is a good option. And Ebony Maw, it's okay, but once again, it's nice if you have Dr. Octopus to give speed up and also deflects to protect him, otherwise his cooldowns are just way too long to make him relevant. So, these options were a little bit questionable, but uh, he did 22 million, 21 million out of uh, 44 million, so that's uh, two shot, and uh, it's decent, it's decent, it's not the best, but it's decent. Now let's take a look at the second node, we have uh, 54 million, here he did a lot better, 35 million, so that's uh, around 60%, and he used exactly the same team. And then on the final node, he made a change on his team, so the node has 76 million HP points and here he changed his team from, uh, from Ebony Mo to Shuri. Now if you are using Phoenix and uh, Adam Warlock, uh, uh, Omega Red or any character that matters, Shuri is a little bit better because she is able to provide the energy so you can use the specials and the ultimates more often so it has that relevance now in terms of stats especially outside of raids shuri is very weak so you have to be extremely careful with her and uh, it's always good to have shuri with someone that can apply offense down and this is why i think invisible woman and shuri is a great combo because you are giving extra energy to shuri whenever you do the special with invisible woman and with that shuri can do her special more often and give energy to everyone else but overall he did what 30 percent of uh, of the node with one attack so we are taking a look at maybe four or five attacks just for this one which is pretty decent and of course like we mentioned before, he was the first to complete and he also already completed the time the time run and uh, I'm very glad that uh, he won because I think he's a modest player, even that he's a whale, but it's, not, it's none of your business where he spends his money, but I think he did pretty well. So now let's take a look at the characters once again in a list and also the gear he spent and then we are going to rate his performance. Okay, so here we are taking a look at the characters he used once again. So on the first note, he used Sharon Carter, Captain Sam, Cloak and Dagger, and Kestrel. In terms of path of investment, I think it's not terrible. Two city characters, two global characters, one cosmic character. I would prefer to have another city character, like Shang-Chi. I think it would be a lot stronger than Kestrel in this specific situation. But it's still a good position in terms of progressing towards the other nodes. Then he went very heavy on cosmic characters. I think that that's a problem. It makes a, a huge strain in terms of the city characters and global characters. I don't think you should invest so much on the cosmic characters like this. So the Cloak and Dagger, fine, okay. But then the Cersei and Icarus, that would be fine as well, but the Deadpool I think is really overkill. And uh, it's nice that it helps with the HP, but I, I don't know if this is exactly the best choice. Once again, I think Cheng Shi would make a lot uh, more sense here than uh, Deadpool. Okay, so after we have uh, the Node 4, 5 and 6, use it always the same team. So Symbiote Spider-Man, Anti-Venom, Cloak and Dagger and Shang Chi, and he did very well with his team. Then on the global nodes, we have uh, Captain America Sam Wilson, Doctor Doom, Sharon Carter, Emma Frost, and Ghost. He did this for two nodes, and then he replaced Ghost with uh, Mary Hill. 
and uh, that was pretty decent no because of these investments he had to jump right away with the with the global characters he had these two so it was only a, a jump of three characters so not terrible but definitely i would not recommend a uh, path of progression in terms of investment of the characters like this but he still did quite decent then we have the cosmic nodes and on the cosmic nodes he didn't change any of the characters we have Falavel, Kestrel, the two Eternals and the Deathpool and finally we have the legendary nodes with Ebony Maw Phoenix, Adam Warlock, Omega Red and the Black Bolt and then he changed Ebony Maw for Shuri like we saw before and uh, yeah I, I'm <laughs> I'm not exactly sure about uh, this in terms of characters because uh, when we take a look at uh, the characters that he invested he has four bio four bio it's fine he had uh, in total 252 mini uniques so that's a good average in terms of mutants he only had three mutants and this is this is where I think he liked it a lot and he could have done a little bit better so he invested in three mutants and uh, he had a total of 180 mini uniques so it's nice but uh, I think he could have increased the mutants a little bit more uh, maybe going with Jubilee on the legendaries or something like this instead of uh, Ebony Maw or uh, uh, Black Bolt then uh, we have eight mystic characters and this is uh, where I think he made a huge mistake investing on Ebony Maw I don't think it was a great option and uh, the other characters I mean okay yes I, I guess the characters are good but it's so mystic investment that for a normal person this this would be uh, literally impossible and uh, this is why right now you should wait a little bit before investing in cloak and dagger because of so many city characters that are coming next patch so yeah I think uh, it was okay but uh, not something I would recommend for most people out there uh, even if you want to bring cloak and dagger maybe don't bring Deadpool because it's just way too much mystic gear and it will be a huge strange for you or at least cut the ebony maw and adam warlock even that adam warlock it's quite good overall for the note so it's it's a great character but it's gonna take a huge strain on your investments then on the skill characters he had five characters with 234 mini uniques so that's very very good value I think it's quite great getting five characters for this price and then in terms of the tech characters he invested on four characters for 270 mini uniques which is not terrible but the problem with these characters is that many of them are not future proof and uh, or at least we are not sure in terms of Shuri she right now she's not that great she's barely okay for the doom raids but ghost i think she's very expensive and she has barely any use on the doom raids so it's definitely something i would not consider for myself okay so in terms of characters in efficiency now we are going to rate his performance and his investments and so on in terms of the character efficiency I gave him a 8 out of 10 because he used two more characters than he should he should have used only 20 characters and he used 22 and two of them were quite expensive so this is a low 8 this is almost a 7 out of 10 because um, yeah I don't think the investments on uh, on uh, Ghost and Ebony Maw really don't pay off and uh, both of these characters have barely no use on the game right now so yeah i think in terms of uh, character efficiency it was not great so maybe a 7 out of 10 now in terms of uh, future proof also a 7 out of 10 uh, some of these characters are a little bit outdated and they have a low value overall into the game so we have ghost we have emma frost she's okay but she's not great low usage overall in the game you can somewhat use her on arena but you don't need to invest on her any gear because it's 100% based on her kit and she has some use in alliance wars but beyond that she's not uh, that uh, useful 
In terms of uh, the other characters, like I was mentioning before, we have Ebony Mo. He's not that great. He's, his time has passed uh, long ago and uh, that's pretty much it. In terms of Phoenix, we have to wait and see if they are going to increase their stats or not with the rework next patch. Right now she is also outdated character and Adam Warlock it's questionable because yes he was part of the arena meta in the past but right now he is uh, not that great, he is not that useful as well on the Doom raids and uh, he's still pretty decent in Alliance War so I'm not going to remove too much from that but in terms of future proofing of the characters we're invested on I gave it a 7 out of 10. Then in terms of gear efficiency I gave him a 6 out of 10 and this is because he relied so much on mystic characters and uh, yeah maybe even a 5 out of 10 like this 8 8 characters is just too much I think if you are bringing Cloak and Dagger and uh, the Eternals and so on maybe you cannot bring a Deathpool or maybe I don't know it it's not terrible but then Deathpool and then Adam Warlock and then Ebony Maw I, I think it's very unnecessary so it would be nicer to have uh, Jubilee and Dr. Octopus I think that would be very interesting as well but uh, yeah so yeah in terms of uh, gear efficiency a 6 out of 10 uh, a low 6 maybe high 5 uh, I will just stay with a 6 now in terms of uh, the performance now in, in terms of his performance I think that he did fairly well he one-shotted 8 of the 15 nodes so that's very very good and uh, on and in 4 nodes he was the highest dealing player the player that did the most damage so that's very very nice and uh, on the legendary nodes that was where he performed the worst once again I think if he had brought uh, uh, Dr. Octopus and uh, Jubilee he would have an easier time there but I, I, I still think he did pretty decent having that into consideration so overall in terms of skill I gave him a 7 out of 10 but it's a 7 plus or 8, eight minus so that's pretty decent I think he did fairly well in terms of a skill and that's the difference between some players uh, you can have uh, better Ray Bill, uh, you Tanado Mac uh, Japan, and you have Philosopher. All of them are whales, but uh, one of them or the other has a lot more skill than the other one, and this will uh, result in uh, spending more cores, refreshing the nodes, and so on. So, yeah, guys, that's going to be the view my review of uh, Tanado's Mac uh, Japan performance on uh, Dark Dimension 5. I, I think he did uh, very very well, even that he is a whale, I think he's one of the best whales out there because not only he has the resources but he also has the skill and uh, this is why it's the second time that he's the first on uh, Dark Dimension. He was the first on Dark Dimension 3 which was one of the hardest Dark Dimensions that we ever had. On Dark Dimension 4 he was on the second place and I think he could be the first one but uh, he decided to not uh, to let someone else take it because he had the advantage for quite a while and uh, now in Dark Dimension 5 once again he is the first to complete it and uh, I'm really glad for this and like I said before in terms of overall review of his performance the gear investments and so on I give him a 7 plus out of 10 I think he did very very well and uh, we have to wait and see for the other players if they are going to do better than him or not we have a better Ray Bill and a Philosopher in the race and uh, then we'll see who is the, the best whale out there so yeah guys that's gonna be the video I hope you guys enjoy it if you did you know how to do smash that like button like a boss and uh, if you're new to my channel make sure you subscribe for more Marvel Strike Force content and I'll catch you guys later